So there's an argument that I want to debunk when it comes to the conversation about who is the best NBA player of all time. Is it Michael Jordan, which is pretty much universally accepted? Uh, is it Michael Jordan? Is it Kobe Bryant? Is it LeBron James? And then you can toss in whoever else you want, Magic Johnson, whatever the fuck. Um, now, here's the thing, okay? So Michael Jordan was 6-0 in the finals. LeBron James, 3-6. Th- and six. Not, so, not so good. Now, here's the thing. So whenever people will, you know, talk to LeBron fans and, you know, tell them, hey, uh, you know, there was, you know, Michael Jordan had a 6-0 record while LeBron has a 3-6 and six record. So what you're looking at is they'll respond. What they'll respond with is, "Oh, well, if that's your metric, then you have to give it to Bill Russell, because Bill Russell had 12 championships." Now here's the thing. Okay, here's what they don't tell you, and here's the the fucking misleading ass part about that. How many teams were there in the first year that he played, and how many teams were there in the final year that he played? In the first year that he played, there were eight NBA teams in total. <laughs> there were eight fucking teams in the entire NBA. How many were there in the final year that he played? Nine NBA teams. Think about that. There was less than one-third of the amount of teams there are today. If you just take that from the most basic odds perspective as you possibly can, right? One out of eight, one out of nine, astronomically higher of a number than one out of 30. It's not even funny how lower the odds are. But when you talk about that, I think there were also some other rules in place with free agency. So basically, if you got a stacked team... You're pretty much set for a fat minute, right? But the point here being that when you have a team where you can get stacked and then there's literally all you had to do is bulldoze through seven other teams, that's way fucking easier than winning a championship in a league with 30 teams. So it's not comparable. It's just a bullshit comparison. I want to make that very clear. It's a faulty, very faulty argument, misleading argument. However, I will say this. Is championship numbers the per- the right or the number one metric for who's the best player? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I, I'm starting to veer towards no, but, you know, because I don't know if that's the right way to do it because championships are a team thing, so it doesn't really make sense to make that the main metric. Uh, but just because I, you know, debunk a faulty argument doesn't mean that a, that a point is wrong or a position is wrong. Uh, I don't know, to be honest, because that's something that has to be opened up for more, for more conversational, for conversational purposes. But, you know, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting thing, okay, because then you also have, okay, LeBron, he, if he was in the West, he would not have that many finals appearances. I'm, he wouldn't. I mean, by obviousness, he wouldn't have these many, fi- this many finals appearances. So how much does it go into account the fact that, He's had a cakewalk to the finals every single fucking year. I mean, I think the deepest he's ever gone in his championships with this second run with Cleveland, let's just let's even just bring it down to that. I think the closest was this past year, which was a four and three. So, you know, prior to that he was just shitting on on all of his opponents, which is <laughs> embarrassing, quite obviously. And so, you know, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this.